Hello fellow old schoolers. Now this match is from a new tournament I went uh, to last weekend called the Mountain of Madness uh, in Denmark. It's one of the older tournaments here um, and it's really has a lot of traditions. Let's just go over the prize pool here. This is the for first, second and third place. There's a beta mountain in each basket and then we have uh, a lot of uh, little altars and um, unlimited uh, beta cards and here are all the players uh, for this match. That's me in the red uh, crimson cobra <laughs> shirt there. This is the deck I um, I took to the event. I, I had anticipated to go with the Skynet but um, the, um, the people behind this tournament uh, told me that they, they, there was a the additional prices for having a, a lot of 5-5 five, five creatures and they also wanted people to have summon legends so I thought well, Composition A has more of that. So I sleep this up and then I put in Sulk another Swamp King. Now he's a borderline usable. I mean, it's not, actually not a bad card, especially not in Composition A. So I sometimes use him. Five, five Swamp Walk and I get a life point, much needed life point um, to uh, counteract the Juice and uh, City of Brass damage uh, whenever I play a black card. And this is the sideboard, we see it here. Um, yeah, we've gone over this deck a bunch before. This is uh, another iteration of it. Uh, in the first match, I was coming up against uh, Enchantress uh, Combado Gin Party, he, 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 he called it. Um, pretty spicy brew here. A lot of enchantments, a lot of uh, Bedouin Enchantress, and there's this righteousness right there. It's pretty damn awesome. And some Kumba Witches. Ah, oh, that's why it's called the Combado Party. All right. Yeah, so. In this tournament, it turned out that there were uh, like this subgroup of really spicy decks, and I met one of them here. Uh, in this matchup, I would have uh, preferred if I had went in with the Demon Engine or perhaps my new um, brew with Kismet. Uh, a bit more of a spicy matchup, um, but yeah, I went in with Composition A, so this is a bit of an uneven match, I think. But very very interesting deck. Here's a sideboard, pretty damn odd. Uh, a couple of dual lands and a, a lot of the pit. <laughs> I don't know what the plan is there. Could be interesting to hear his take on it. A circle of protection, black and a lot of the pit. Perhaps that's a combination right there. He likely take in those circle of protections against me. Uh, a lot of my uh, of the damage potential from composition A uh, are black sources. Anyway, that is the matchup, the first opponent in this tournament, and we'll follow Composition A as it goes along, and we have a camera for other matchups as well. Let's get into it. This is round number one. Of match number one of the Mountain of Madness. So, Composition A is on the left here. Uh, I think I'm winning the roll-off here with a four against a three. So, let's see how this matchup plays out. Okay, I'm actually mulliganing the first hand here. I, I had to uh, put together Composition A just uh, before kickoff of this tournament, so I don't think I have... Uh, I've some, sometimes I experience this when you've just put together a deck, it needs to warm up. I mean, <laughs> even though that I shuffle it a lot, uh, there's this odd thing where it hasn't been played uh, right. As I said, I, I, I came to this tournament uh, with Skynet and then I changed uh, the decision uh, at the last minute. Uh, once I realized that they want as many 5-5 creatures in the deck as possible and they also want a uh, summon legend. Alright, Composition A should be on the play here. We're mulliganing down to 6 cards. And at this point I had no idea what I was facing here. Starting off with the Badlands, pretty damn uh, slow and steady here. No uh, power at all. Swap into a Will-o'-the-Wisp. So that would be quite annoying against the Jusum Jins, as they can hold them back indefinitely. And you can also uh, block Spectres. So, didn't know what I was against here. Uh, I remember I was thinking it could be a Disc Control variant, but I'm cracking the Black Mana just for good measure, just to he hold him back. And uh, it'll make it a bit more difficult to regenerate that little uh, zero one flying wisp there. As we see he puts down a forest so now he can't regenerate that uh, little critter. So that's all fine and good. Factory coming down into a hypnotic spectra here. Uh, attack is starting as he can't regenerate. Tundra he still can't regenerate actually. Getting on a bird. 
So next turn, you'll be able to regenerate with the bird, but for now I can get in with the Spectre. So he blocks with it, and plays a Righteousness. I've never had that done against me in a tournament. I was, <laughs> I was really surprised, and it was really, I, I really like Red Righteousness. I think I had them in my first deck. Plus seven, plus seven for a defending creature. Just crushing that Spectre. Uh, the Wilder was growing to an incredible size. So Juice and Jin gets down here. Um, I, I need to get it out. Um, so far, he can actually keep it back with the Will of the Wisp uh, by uh, using black mana from that bird to regenerate it because he doesn't have any swamps. So I need to get rid of that Will of the Wisp uh, and until then, the Deuce and Bean was just paying me. Okay, I just drew into a Mind Twist here. Mind Twisting him for three. Don't have any Moxen, don't have any fast mana here, so not the biggest Mind Twist, but oh, Castle, Unholy Strength. I was really <laughs> flabbergasted at this. Uh, this hand, I no idea what I'm on, what I'm against here. Really a spicy brew. But so far he's been able to keep me back. Now blocking uh, the Dusum Jin with that Will of the Wisp, and I'm Dusum Jin pings me. So I need more attacker, so we need to draw into a source of plowshares just to get rid of that uh, little willow. Uh, getting down a spectre here. So now we have two attackers at least. Actually, three with that factory. If I want to risk you losing a land, that might not be the best uh, play because I only have four mana. I'm a bit mana start, but so is so is he. Okay, keeping the factory back, coming over the Dusum Jin and the Spectre here. Now, what should he block? He chooses to block the Dusum Jin, I think, and uh, then he loses a card. I mean, both are pretty brutal. Getting a two to our main. Now, now Brain Guys Ring. Uh, Getting down a, a second bad lane, spring guys for three here. Still no fast mana, no mox and no anything. But uh, quite a card advantage at this point. Mind twisting for three and then brain guys for three. And disrupting his mana sources here with that sinkhole. So we should have a source to plowshares at this point. Uh, at least something, a bolt maybe. Strip buying the tundra here. Okay, sink on the forest. And now attacking with everything as he can't disenchant now. So he blocks the Jusum Jin and takes four points of damage, uh, losing a card as well. Venom Jin, not the best pick, he can't play anything. His uh, mana sources has been completely obliterated, but I'm quite surprised I didn't draw a bolt just to get rid of that darn bird. Um, or a source to plowshare to get rid of the willow. Can't complain. Uh, Composition A just uh, destroys everything here uh, from the, on the opponent's side of the table. Taking with everything again, nicking another card. It's a disenchant. Now time. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> time walking here while he's tapped out. That's nine points of damage as far as I can see. Yep. Putting him down to one. Now tutor. Oh, okay, getting an Unholy Dreams. So, <laughs> there's a cheeky way to do direct damage here. It takes a point of damage uh, once he draws a card and he can't remove the Unholy Dreams before that. Composition A takes the first match here. So, we're sideboarding a bit, uh, getting some Brewskis. I think, actually, I don't think I, I play with Bolts in the main deck. I think I put them in here. Uh, he's likely put in his Circular Protection Black. Um, as I remember, I had a bolt and a fireball uh, in the sideboard. I think I put them in because I saw uh, some little critters here. All right, let's gear up for round number two. And the Viduran, Viduran Jin party deck is on the play here. Tundra, passing the turn to composition A. Factory, really slow start again. I think these first few matches, Composition A was a bit, uh, had a lot of mana trouble. Strip mining the factory here. Hmm. I don't want to see nothing else. Okay, a couple of planes here. Uh, Tundra on the plane. And, oh, that's a circle protection black. So, good start. 
uh, I'll have a lot of trouble getting in. At least we have, at least we have a factory. That's a uh, not a black color. Okay, bird coming down. That mana fixes him. Would be nice to get rid of that. Okay, bolted the bird actually. Yeah, I think I put that in from the sideboard. Now, uh, activating the factory and attacking with it, but he has a decent chance. Removing my factory as a fast effect before I get in. Swamp coming out, and that's a fourth mana source. We might see some Unambience at this point. Nope, takes that back. Instead, opting to get a regrowth on the bird. No, on the strip mine. Ah, oh, cheeky. And then cracking my underground C. Really putting pressure on uh, my mana. I only have a single bad lane. Uh, really reversing on it here. I do have. Oh, okay. Th did have a scrub lane. Then I kept the box in hand, it seems. This is turning the uh, circle, uh, the circumstation black for good measure. At least you can't regrowth that now. As he's used to regrowth. Okay, so he starts his attack here. Enumgen coming out. I do have a uh, white mana though, so another scrub lane. Soft apply showing the uh, Enumgen. It should be removed from the graveyard actually, but okay, he does it here. Okay, then passing the turn. I don't, can't play anything, but I can defend myself at this point. Just waiting for to draw into some uh, some aggression here. Let's see if he can keep up the pressure. Bayou coming down. Okay, as an enchantress come out. First time I saw that in the deck. Now he tutors. Hmm. Yeah, be so interesting to see what he'll pick here. Uh, I don't know. Perhaps some enchantment of a, or maybe a mind twist. Now we'll cut a bit forward while he shuffled through his deck here, so we don't have to wait. Okay, when he's tapped out, uh, composition A casts Ancestor Recall. Dragon Blue Max. Oh, mind twisting <laughs> the card he picked. Oh, he picked a circular position black. Makes sense. All right, and starting the attack here. Now, an Underworld Dreams would actually stop that Enchantress in her tracks, but I suppose without a hand... Yeah, he could have drawn another card with a Circle Protection Black. It actually makes perfect sense. Okay, getting in with the Spectra, and he loses the Savannah. Surprised he didn't play that, but it doesn't really matter. He's mana fixed. Do some Jin coming down. Yeah, he'll, he'll have a bit of trouble here. Um, what to do? Has a single card in hand, he'll lose it next turn uh, to the Spectre if he doesn't play it. Oh, he has a... Ah, okay, that's a good, nice uh, draw, actually. Ah, uh, losing my 100 Dreams in a Time Twister would have likely killed him pretty soon. Getting the draw, uh, Dreams out next turn, getting in for 7, and then doing 7 more points of damage whenever I choose to with the Time Twister. But losing that hand and losing the Spectre uh, to the balance. Nice punch in by uh, the Viduran Jin party here. Balancing stuff out. Still get to keep a single creature though because of the Viduan Enchantress. And he couldn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, getting um, another Spectre out. He, another. He could have. Okay, getting a little uh, fly out here. He, he, he couldn't block my uh, my Spectre. Otherwise, he could have waited with the balance. Um, then block with the uh, Enchantress to lose her and then balance the turn after. But the Spectre would make him discard the balance if he if he so chose. Uh, to, if, 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 if he chose that. So, cracking his Bayou uh, just to pressure his uh, his ability to regenerate. Oh, yeah, uh, right here I tell him that I remind him here that he can actually use the Bayou as a fast effect to make a regeneration shield on the Will of the Wisp, sort of like regenerating it uh, in the future. So, even though he was tapped out with the uh, swap, he, it was possible for him to regenerate the Will of the Wisp. Um, uh, with that cracked bayou, it's, it's a small little thing, but um, it made it possible for him to keep it alive. So getting in again here, uh, now he has a swamp on tap, so now he can regenerate the usual way. And disenchanting the blue marks before it gets uh, 
removed by that spectra. So we can still keep that uh, Jusum Jin at bay, but he does take two points of damage each turn. Another spectra though, but now he can't regenerate. Only a single swamp because I cracked that Bayou. Uh, so it's a bit of a pickle here. Chooses to uh, sacrifice uh, the Willow to the Jusum Jin, getting damage from the spectra. Another Willow the Wisp, but he doesn't have a black mana. I mean, if I hadn't cracked that bay Bayou, he could actually keep my troops uh, away here with two Willow the Wisps ne the next turn. But at this point, um, he can't do much. You can play them and just feed it into the grinder here. He's another black mana source. Oh, at his end step, I soft to plowshare his willow this time. So now he is defenseless. And then getting in with a big punch here. Should probably block with the Vajun Enchantress at this point. Okay, losing the lightning bolt. Going down to two. Okay, keeping the Vaduan Enchantress actually. Alright. Need a web on it or something. Uh, unholy Strength. Drawing another card with her. Yeah, that's game. Alright. Uh, he kept a, uh, himself alive for a surprisingly long time here. Getting help uh, uh, helped by that balance play. Uh, but in the end, uh, all his defensive mechanisms with the Circle of Protection Black and the Will of the Wisps uh, slowly just got overrun. Uh, by the creatures uh, from Composition A and uh, its ability to remove stuff, which is uh, quite good actually. So, okay, this is what I took in, I think. A couple of sushis just for additional creatures, a lightning bolt and a fireball. I don't know what I took out. Hmm, perhaps the dreams? I don't know. No, they're, they're good against the, the Enchantress and uh, Seven libraries, I can't remember. So anyway, nice start uh, from this tournament. Composition A uh, wins the first match 2 to 0. In all honesty, I would have uh, liked to have one of my more spicy brews up against this. It was a really nice uh, deck to play against, but um, perhaps uh, a bit uneven this particular matchup. But we're advancing in the tournament uh, with as good a score as I could reasonably uh, get. So uh, yeah, let's uh, brace for impact for next the next match in this tournament. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.